Hello and welcome to a new episode of learning. In this video you will learn about quantum number. This portion is belonging to the chapter structure of atoms. So hi I am Akanksha and you are watching Chemistry Nuggets. And if you like the channel and you like the information whatever is shared here please subscribe that channel. So about the quantum number uh, what we knew that uh, Earlier we learned that electron is a particle and it is moving around a nucleus in a fixed path. So it is very easy to find its location. But later on in higher classes we learned that electron is behaving like a wave. So its path is like something this. And we don't know where is the electron. So finding the position of electron when it is moving like a, uh, behaving like a wave, we have four parameters. These four parameters are like, the first one is principal quantum number. The second one is azimuthal quantum number. The third one is magnetic quantum number and the fourth is spin quantum number. So these four parameters are necessary to locate an electron when it is behaving like a wave. So this is just like uh, uh, finding uh, address of uh, anybody. So what we will do, we need to know four, inf we have four informations like first we know the country which he is living, second he will, we will learn the where he, the city he is living, then in which locality he is living and after that finally in which building that person is living. So like that in the same way four parameters we need to know, then only we can tell the exact position of the electron. So let's check out the first one, principal quantum number. This is also denoted by n. So the points what I am going to tell you is number one, it is also known as shell. Second point is it is always a positive integer. Like 1, 2, 3 and like that. The third point what I am going to tell you. Principal quantum number identifies or we can say principal quantum number tells you about the size and energy of that orbital. So we can write it here. Denotes size and energy of the size and energy means if the n is 1 it means it is nearby the nucleus it is smaller in size if uh, n is uh, increasing like 2 3 4 it is comparatively bigger will uh, in size and the energy will also be higher so now, next point is if we have the value of n, we can get the number of orbitals in that subshell, uh, sorry, in that shell. So, for any n number of number of orbitals is n square. For example, if n is equal to 2, then number of orbitals will be number of orbitals should be 2 square is equal to 4. Like that we can tell. 
done. Next point is if we knew the principal quantum number, we will tell the number of electrons that that in that principal quantum number or any n number of electrons will be 2n square that we also learned earlier in our lower classes so for example if n is equal to 2 then Number of electrons accommodated will be 2 into 2 square is equal to electrons. Okay, and the number of orbitals will be, we can say, 4 and the number of electrons will be 8. This is all about the principal quantum number that will, these points will help in solving our numericals. Now, come to the next one, azimuthal quantum number. It is denoted by the symbol L. It is also called as um, angular momentum quantum number or we can say subsidiary quantum number. It is also known as subshell in general language. Subshell, we can say. Second point, what we are going to know is it uh, gives the idea about the shape of the orbital. Like uh, in which shape the electron is moving. There are mainly four kinds we read about. Like if it maybe it is circular or we can say spherical if the path is spherical it is called as s orbital if the path is dumbbell you know dumbbell what we are lifting in the gym that is called dumbbell so if it is a dumbbell shape the this dumbbell shape means the path in which the electron is moving like if electron is moving like that 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 we can say it is p orbital if the shape is double dumbbell means two dumbbells the orbital will be d and for f orbital the shape is very complicated we can we can't draw it here so we can simply write complex complex structure then it will be f orbital so with the help of azimuthal quantum number, we will know the shape of the path in which electron is moving. The third point, what I am going to tell you is, for any L, what is the values of L? For any N, the values of L is N. Let me explain this. If N is equal to 3, then L has the values, total values of L, total L should be 3 and it will range from 0 to n minus 1. So, if n is equal to 3, then L will be 0, 1 and n minus 2, n minus 1 means 3 minus 1. So, 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. So, these are the total value of L. If n is equal to 3. And one more thing what I am going to tell you is here. Uh, in that if 0 that it will be s orbital we can say. If it is 1 we can say 
p orbital if it is 2 we can say d orbital and if it is 3 we can say f orbital and so on we can say like that so let's uh, mm, together we can study the n and l and the notations notations means the name of orbital which it belongs to i will tell if n is equal to 1 then l will be n minus 1 0 to n minus 1 i told you so 0 and n minus 1 means 1 minus 1 0 itself so the l will be 0 only now again i will tell you the total values of l will be the values of uh, n so n is here 1 so l the total value is only 1 that is 0 and 0 denotes s here it is 1 s in the same way we will do so this portion is very important to understand if n is equal to 2 what will happen here it has a value starting from 0 1 1 and next to no because n minus 1 n minus 1 is 2 minus 1 it will be 1 so we have only 0 and 1 over here so total values of l will be n n is 2 over here so here we have 1 this and 1 this 2 values now again we can write here 0 for s 1 for P. Now we can write 2s, 2p. 2 comes from the value of n. In the same way, we can write more values. If n is equal to 3, then l will be 3 minus 1 means 2 till 2. 0, 1, 2. That's it. See n is equal to 3, here the total values of l is equal to 1, 2, 3. Now, again we will write the notations for 0, s orbital, for 1, p orbital and for 2, d orbital. Now, we can write 3s, 3p and 3d. In this way, we can count all the notations on the orbitals. And the total number of orbitals, we can count it here. Hope you guys understand the next question that is magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. I will tell you in the next video. Till then, if you have any doubt, you can ask me by posting your queries. Thank you.